Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. I am your host, Rusty Peace, and tonight we're going to be talking with Lincoln Memorial University head women's basketball coach Roger Hodge as the Lady Rail Splitters prepare to open the 2013 14 schedule this Sunday when they traveled to Winston Salem, North Carolina to take on Winston Salem State University. We'll also run down the past week in Lincoln Memorial University Athletics, and we'll give you a look at what's ahead in the next week in LMU Athletics. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, the Rail Splitters matchup this Saturday night with, uh, of course, Hugh Watson and the Tigers of Hawassi College. Coach Watson making a comeback after uh, uh, a bout with cancer and getting back into the coaching game. We'll have an exclusive interview with him as well as Josh Schertz in the free game on Saturday night. We're going to tell you all about that tonight as well as Jeremy Donahue and the Lincoln Memorial University cross country teams competing in the NCAA Southeast Regional. Coach L's efforts in the SAC tournament and Jenny Michaels about in regular season play. We're back after this on the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. If you love your car or truck, let us help you keep it clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's has unlimited wash plans to fit every budget. Try our $5 express wash or one of our three monthly wash plans. The Wheel Deal, the Soapy J, or the new Blast Wax. With our monthly wash plans, if you pay with credit card, all you do is pay for the present month and your card will be billed on the first of each month. Don't forget, Soapy J's has free vacuums with any wash. Soapy J's Express Car Wash, open seven days a week. Let us help keep your car or truck clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's on the Cumberland Gap Parkway, Middlesboro. The J. Frank White Academy is more than a high school. Your child will have room to grow in mind, body, and spirit. Small, safe learning environments, individualized learning plans, and cutting edge technology. Every child deserves a quality education in a safe, nurturing environment. Our college prep program teaches a love of learning, self-discipline, and service to others. The Academy is fully accredited by Advanced Ed. You have a choice at the J. Frank White Academy. Since 1973, DeRoyal has been a leader and an innovator in manufacturing products for the healthcare industry. DeRoyal supplies more than 20,000 products and product lines such as acute care, orthopedics, wound care, and trauma. DeRoyal is proud to be the largest supplier of orthopedic soft goods to clinics and hospitals in the nation. Since its start in Tazewell, Tennessee, DeRoyal has grown to open factories in over 29 locations worldwide and employs over 2,000 people. DeRoyal, a name you can trust and an employer you can count on. Looking for efficient, compassionate, and comprehensive health care for you and your family? Visit University Medical Clinic. All providers are faculty members of LMU's DeBus College of Osteopathic Medicine and are board certified in their specialty. Multiple specialties available including family medicine, pediatrics, OBGYN, and osteopathic manipulative medicine with locations in Harrogate, Taswell, and New Taswell, and most insurance plans accepted. University Medical Clinic is here to serve you. Call 423-869-7193 for an appointment. University Medical Clinic. Welcome back to the show. This Sunday, Lincoln Memorial University head women's basketball coach Roger Hodge and his Lady Rail Splitters traveled to Winston-Salem, North Carolina to open the 2013-14 schedule. They'll play Winston-Salem State University. And coach, I know that uh, as I told Josh Schertz in the pregame, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon, in the Rail Splitter Athletics Report pregame for uh, Saturday night's matchup, uh, LME fans have been looking forward to this one for a long time, and I'm sure you're ready to get going for this season? No question about it. Uh, we've, we've got a lot of a um, lot of new faces and uh, you know along with with several talented returning kids and uh, and they're a good group that we've enjoyed working with and uh, yeah we're, we're no question excited to get it tipped off. Between the radio show and uh, talking down at to Halloween Havoc and various interviews we do throughout the week you and I've had the opportunity to talk quite a bit in terms of uh, for the most part, the same things over and over, you know, which is the beginning of the 2013-14 schedule, the players that are involved. But when you look at the returners, you've got a good returning foundation. Uh, you've got one of your, your top uh, scorer, uh, Kalasia Green, returning uh, from a year ago. You've got uh, a great post player in Miranda Bodie returning. But uh, you did mention those new faces that you've got, and you have got a pile of them this year. Well, and I think the best teams that I have ever coached have always been a combination of, you know, solid returners and talented kids from that area and, and then bringing in newcomers to, to kind of bolster them as well. And uh, uh, we think we've got a good combination and a good mix. So far, the kids, you know, kind of have a good chemistry and, and work well together. Uh, and, and we'll see how it plays out to, to see what kind of success we can have. Now, you've had several scrimmages this year. Obviously, uh, because of NCAA regulations, we really can't talk about that. They're not exhibitions. They were scrimmages. 
in the scrimmages that you've played prior to your season opener on Sunday, what do you feel the strengths have been for this team thus far? Well, I, I think our ability to defend and and, uh, and to play at a good pace. Uh, I, I think always this time of the year, your your defense is generally ahead of the offense, and uh, you know our offensive execution needs to improve, uh, and, and we need to continue to work toward that. But I've been very happy defensively, and I've been happy with with our effort and attitude toward getting better. So, you know, I think so far that's been the strength. Uh, you know, in terms of your tenure here as head coach, I look at it, and uh, this is a team that is comprised of 100% your players, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think there's any leftovers from the, uh, the last era of Stephanie Smith at this point. But uh, when I see a coach, and I've been doing this for a long time in terms of watching the athletics department, when I see a coach uh, signing players early, to me that kind of says, okay, they're getting the players they want. Uh, you've got to be very pleased with some of the signees that you have, whether they be uh, junior college transfers, transfers from other schools, or high school products. We try to be kind of particular, especially in the early period, you know, because again, at the Division II level, a lot of times you have to wait for the, the Division ones to kind of make their picks and such. But uh, uh, we have found a few in the early periods that, that we've been happy with and excited about that, that have contributed. Uh, I really like specifically our sophomore class, uh, you know, and, and those are largely, you know, kids that we signed out of high school. And they've made, you know, giant leaps from their freshman to sophomore year. They're much more comfortable in our system, and uh, uh, we hope that trend continues. Uh, one of those transfers, Katrina Otteson, I know that I was looking very forward to seeing her play on Halloween Havoc night down there in that intra squad, but. Uh, she was out with a, a minor injury, as I understand it. You said she was back in the scrimmage that you guys played earlier this week. And uh, I know that uh, from watching her uh, in the gymnasium on the extra effort she puts in every day, she is a workhorse. And from what I understand, uh, she is as good a player as she is a person. Well, she's a special kid all the way around. And, you know, every day when I get into work, she's usually been in there shooting and uh, she certainly puts the time in, and, and quite honestly, I, I think she would tell you this too, and, you know, some of her extra work has, has been what's caused that little bit of a nagging foot injury that, you know, we think we've got a handle on it now, and we think she's okay. She may have to, you know, rest some from time to time, but uh, I, I, think, I think our fans are really going to enjoy, uh, you know, watching her play. She's been out a year, so she's still knocking a little bit of the rust out, but, uh, uh, you know, I think she's going to be a fun kid to watch. There's a lot of new faces on the on the team this year, and uh, because of that, I apologize. I've not yet gotten a grasp on everybody's name. Uh, and there's a lot of talent on this year's team, both returning in and, and newcomer. Uh, but one of the young ladies that I've been hearing a lot about and have seen some of in practice uh, has been a young lady that you picked up by uh, way of uh, Walter State Community College that, uh, as far as I've seen, offensively, defensively, ball handling, decision making, she's possibly one of your most well-rounded players. Well, Asia Roan is one we were fortunate you know, to pick up. We, uh, you know, and she is, she's a kid that's got a motor. She's a great athlete. She was a first team division one, or first team division one junior college All-American last season. And, and again, just another really sweet kid, a, a character kid from a standpoint of, you know, very respectful, comes out and works as hard as she can every day. And, and you know, what you're going to see from her has been interesting to me is that she has such an impact on the defensive end. Uh, she's a tremendous defender, and I, and I don't know that I've had a kid impact the game on one end of the floor defensively uh, like she has. And that's not to take anything away from her offensive game, but uh, uh, she will be one of the best defenders you'll see anywhere. You're going to hear a lot more about the newcomers as the season progresses, and you'll hear a lot more in, in, in a very quick fashion. Uh, Coach, let's talk. Let's go back to your uh, your returners again. Um, again, in watching the team, I have my opinions uh, as to uh, the improvements that some of these kids have made in the off season. Uh, as you see it right now, and you see it much better and much more than I do on a daily basis, uh, who has made the biggest improvements among your returners uh, since last season? You know, that's a tough question. Um, I, you know, I look out at, and I see a lot of improvement in Courtney Cox and Elliot Roberts down, you know, on, on the inside. 
Um, I think Miranda Davenport has really stepped up her game. Jasmine Kelly is, is, is much improved. Brittany Guy has, has done a great job. It's hard to put my finger on one of those. Uh, just again, because I, I think they have all gotten better. Everybody that, that has returned seems to have gotten, you know, gotten better and improved their game. So, uh, you know, and I think any time that you have that, hopefully that elevates your whole team. But uh, uh, it, it is hard to, to just say, well, you know, there's one that's improved a great deal over the other. I look at your team as a whole, and uh, just uh, from an outsider's standpoint, I see the athleticism and the depth, especially at the guard position, uh, as good as I have seen it uh, to the point of maybe uh, three years, the retirement of the Roger Vinoy era. Uh, the post game, obviously in the Gulf South Conference back in those days was, uh, the Gulf South was a big and physical type play on the inside. Uh, guards that had one or two good moves uh, were, were dominant in, in the women's uh, play of the Gulf South Conference. But in the South Atlantic Conference, it seems like it's a league that's more dominated by guard play. And then you, you are, it's a rarity to have that really quality uh, inside player. Now, we've had our share of those. Lauren Cochran, I thought, was one of the great transfers that you picked in from East Carolina. But Miranda Bodie, I look at her as, as having some of those same qualities. She, she can be a scorer, but she has got a motor that never quits. She's, she runs the floor like a deer. She jumps well, she rebounds well, she's a shot blocker, and she plays with that attitude out there on the floor, and, and you gotta have some of that. And, and I think what you're gonna see from Miranda this season, at least I hope so, I think it'll be a big factor if, if we're successful. Uh, is, is her aggressiveness offensively. Uh, I, I have been trying to get her to be more aggressive, not to improve that part of her game, because I think you know, she can put it on the floor and go to the, go to the basket as well as anybody, but to be more assertive with that. I think we're a much better offensive team when she is more of a presence on the inside. We already know that she can defend and block shots and run and, and, and do so many things so very well. And, I, and you know, I'm excited about the opportunity for her to up that other part of her game. Um, you know, and she's, listen, she's a kid that's a high academic kid. She's, you know, on schedule to graduate in May. And, you know, she has been a, a kid that, that we're really proud to have in our program. Well, Coach, our time has come and gone. We want to wish you the best of luck this Sunday when you travel to Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I know that's an afternoon tip-off for you. And uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be checking out the game and looking forward to having you back in the Tex Turner Arena for your home opener. Thanks very much, Rusty. All right. Roger Hodge and the Lady Rail Splitters take on Winston-Salem State this coming Sunday afternoon. And you can check the LMU Athletics website for detailed information on that season opener for the Lady Rail Splitters. We'll take this time out. We'll be back. This is the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. MyCokeRewards.com. No matter whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, Subway of Harrogate and Middlesbrough has your fresh interests at heart. On your way to work, try one of our mouth-watering breakfast sandwich or flatbread omelets. If it's lunch or dinner time, choose from our wide selection of classic, select, or premium sandwiches, all made to your order. If you're serving a crowd, Subway has sandwich platters, giant subs, box lunches, and even cookie platters. Whether it's dine-in or carry-out, you can eat healthy and eat fresh at Subway. Subway, 362 Catawba Avenue in Harrogate and on the corner of the Village Square Mall, Middlesbrough. It's the Old Town Grill. The Old Town Grill is a special place where you bring more than family, more than friends. Bring a hearty appetite. Because at the Old Town Grill, you'll never walk away hungry. A delicious change from the ordinary. The perfect place to bring the entire family. The best food and plenty of it. Join the fun and treat your appetite to something special. It's the OTG. The OTG is the place to be. I will help families adopt children from around the world and in our own backyard. I am teaching ethics to the next generation of lawyers. I will make a difference for the underserved of this region. I will be an advocate for my clients. As a prosecutor, I fought for those who couldn't speak for themselves. 
I'm a lawyer and professor. I will be a lawyer. I will be a lawyer. I will be a lawyer. Welcome back to the Rail Splitter Athletics Report. Folks, we want to remind you that Monday nights at uh, 8 o'clock and 8.30, you can catch the Roger Hodge and the Josh Shirt shows, and that'll be on WLMU 91.3 FM and on the World Wide Web at www.lmurailsplitters.com. Each week, I'll talk with Roger Hodge and Josh Shirts about everything going on with Lincoln Memorial University women's and men's basketball. That's the Roger Hodge Show, Monday nights at 8 p.m., and the Josh Shirt Show, Monday nights at 8.30 on the LMU Sports Networks, WLMU 91.3 FM, and on the World Wide Web at www.lmurailsplitters.com. All right, folks, we need to get to the stories. Uh, my prompter doesn't seem to be working right now, so let's go to it. Last uh, Friday evening, Jenny Michael and the Lady Rail Splitter Volleyball team picked up their 15th win of the year and their 11th in South Atlantic Conference play when they steamrolled the Cobras of Coker University 3-0 in conference action. The LMU women won 25-10, 25-9, and 25-13 to split the home and away series with the Cobras for the 2013 season. And after the match, we talked with Michael. A, a very good win for us, and it was something it was that we needed and the opportunity time. to just play a little bit better and execute on our side of the floor. You know, we've been struggling the last few weeks just finding a consistent mm -hmm. rhythm, and that was the big challenge that we had for our young ladies tonight was to be consistent, you know. Um, it's always scary playing a team who has the opportunity to play and has nothing to lose, you know. And so in that sense, Coker was very dangerous because they have nothing to lose. And we talked to our girls and communicated with them that, you know, a, a match like tonight, a win for a team like Coger tonight, that makes their season. On Saturday, the Lady Rail Splitters played host to number nine nationally ranked Wingate University. Shelton Collier's Bulldogs entered their second meeting of the year with Lincoln Memorial holding a perfect conference mark of 16-0 while sporting a 20-2 overall record. Although LMU came out fired up and ready to rumble in the opening set, Wingate prevailed with a 25-17 win to take a 1-0 lead in the match. In set two, the Lady Rail Splitters put the Dogs on a chain when they evened the match at 1-1 with a 25-21 victory. The third set proved to be a battle and went all the way down to the wire before Wingate took a 25-21 win of their own. However, the victory also in set three was enough to take some of the wind out of the Lady Rail Splitters as the Bulldogs easily won the final set 25-10 to take the match and to remain undefeated in league play. Now 15-10 overall and 11-6 in South Atlantic Conference action. The Lady Rail Splitters travel to Charlotte, North Carolina this Friday evening for a 7 o'clock start with the Royals of Queens University before moving over to Salisbury, North Carolina on Saturday to take on the Indians of Catawba at 2 p.m. And uh, on Saturday afternoon, the Lady Rail Splitters soccer team also played host to the Bulldogs of Wingate in both teams' regular season finale at the LMU Soccer Complex. It was also senior day for the Lady Rail Splitters who were saying goodbye to seniors Sam Adams and Michelle Allen as well as Teresa Doyle as they were playing in their final home matches of their careers. Things got started on a down note for the LMU women only 46 seconds into the match when Wingate's Brooke Howell used teammate Jade Montgomery's pass to make it 1-0 Bulldogs. In the ninth minute, Wingate's Katie Simpson put the Lady Rail Splitters in a huge hole when she scored unassisted to give the Bulldogs a 2-0 lead. The LMU women finally got on the scoreboard in the 14th minute when senior forward Michelle Allen fired a shot that ricocheted off the defender's head and went past the Bulldog keeper and into the frame to cut the Lady Rail Splitter deficit to 2-1. The score would be LMU's last while Wingate added another devastating blow in the 18th minute when Simpson tallied her second goal to give the Bulldogs a 3-1 lead. Neither team was able to put a shot in frame the remainder of the game and Wingate emerged victorious to spoil LMU Senior Day and to prevent the Lady Rail Splitters from hosting one of this year's SAC Tournament quarterfinal matches. And Tuesday evening, the Lady Rail Splitters soccer team entered quarterfinal round play of the 2013 Food Lion South Atlantic Conference Women's Soccer Tournament as the number five seed and uh, traveled to Salisbury, North Carolina uh, to take on number four seed Catawba College. When the two teams met during regular season play, LMU emerged a 1-0 winner in front of the home crowd at the LMU Soccer Complex. In Tuesday's match, LMU struck pay dirt first when senior Michelle Allen put the Lady Rail Splitters up 1-0 uh, on, on the third minute of the uh, penalty kick uh, following an Indian foul in the box. 
After taking the lead into the break, Catawba wasted no time in evening the score less than three minutes into the second half in the 48th minute when the Indians' Anna Tool scored on a penalty kick after an inadvertent LMU handball. The match remained tied until the 65th minute when LMU junior Rachel, Rachel Vano picked up her third goal of the season when she scored unassisted to give the Lady Rail Splitters a 2-1 lead. The goal turned out to be the game winner for LMU, who now advances to the semifinals of the 2013 Food Lion SAC Tournament to take on number one seed Lenore Ryan University Friday evening at 7 o'clock. That'll take place at the Rock Hill Sportsplex in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Congratulations to Heli Odana and his women's team. Moving over to men's soccer, turning to the Rail Splitters matches last week. Heli Odana and the Rail Splitters played host to the Bulldogs as well last Saturday from Wingate University on Senior Day here at LMU. Seniors Callum Holm and Mario Pinto were re recognized for their contributions to the program during their collegiate careers. Before the match, head coach Heli Odana said that he knew he was going to have a battle on his hands, and boy did he say a mouthful. LMU and Wingate played to a 0-0 tie throughout the first 80 minutes of the match until the Bulldogs Guy Andrade was able to find the back of the net on a penalty kick in the 81st minute following an LMU handball. The goal proved to be a fatal blow to the rail splitters as Wingate was able to escape Harrogate with a 1-0 victory to lock up the number two seed in this year's SAC tournament and to drop the rail splitters into the number four seed position. After the match, we talked with Heli Odana about the loss. Yeah, I mean, for the record, it was, you know, it was a handball, but uh, but uh, nothing to, to take from my team that, you know, we were three players short today. And uh, and we missed a lot, particularly, I mean, both, I mean, all, all of them, but particularly George. You know, George would have been good today to kind of uh, hold the, the, the stronger guys back there. But, uh, you know, all, all the younger guys that stepped up, I mean, six underclassmen started, uh, if not seven. So... Uh, they played their heart out, and, and it's hard because uh, one of them, in particular, a freshman, uh, you know, resulted in, in in the penalty kick, and he feels, you know, uh, responsible, which is not 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 so, you know. But um, uh, if we keep playing like this, I, I, I'm 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 confident that we're going to make a run in the tournament. Cold day last Saturday at the LMU Soccer Complex. On Tuesday, the number four seed Rail Splitters played host to number five seed Coker College. That was in the first round of the 2013 SAC tournament. When the two teams met on September 14th in Hartsville, South Carolina, the match was played to a 2-2 tie after 110 minutes of play. Tuesday's match was a near carbon copy of that regular season meeting. And this time, however, both teams' defensive effort was much stronger, with each team giving up only one goal during regulation and overtime. LMU senior forward Mario Pinto became the Rail Splitters' career goals leader when he tallied LMU's only goal in the 11th minute off of a pass from teammate Alessandro Leal. The uh, Cobras were able to tie the match in the 42nd minute when Coker's Corey Johnson came off the bench to give the Cobras a lift and to use Giuliano Andrade's pass for the equalizer to make it 1-1. One -one. After going scoreless throughout the second half and playing through two overtime periods to a 1-1 one -one tie, LMU and Coker would decide who would advance to Friday's SAC Men's Soccer Tournament semifinals by virtue of a PK shootout. Although it was the Cobras uh, that were able to take the first shot and ultimately the lead, LMU goalkeeper Marcel Barvenitz was able to stop two Coker shots while LMU remained perfect with Mario Pinto sealing the issue to give the Rail Splitters a 4-2 win in the PK shootout and to help his team advance to the 2013 Food Line SAC Men's Soccer Tournament semifinals on Friday. After the match, we had the opportunity to talk with our University Medical Clinic offensive and defensive players of the match, Mario Pinto and Marcelo Barbanitz. We knew that the game today was going to be even like the last one, and we were, we were just trying to press them high and try to get a goal and finish the game in front of them, but at the, the second half we, we had the goal and we worked for it, bring to the overtime and we couldn't score, but thank God we could we could won and myself could catch the PKs and we could convert our, our PKs. And luck. You know, sometimes you just need that necessary luck, you know. You put so much effort in a game and I'm telling you, every time in soccer it's going to get payback, you know. And I think that's what we got today. We put so much effort and we put so much effort against Wingate in, you know, and we didn't get the win, you know. So this this time I think we got the necessary luck and we deserve to win that game. The number four seed rail splitters now travel with number five seed Lady Rail Splitter soccer team to Rock Hill, South Carolina to take on number one seed Queens University in Friday's SAC tournament semifinals. 
The Rail Splitters' second meeting of the year with the Royals will get underway at 4 p.m. at the Rock Hill Sportsplex. The winner will advance to Sunday's championship match, and we want to wish the best of luck to Helio Dana and his teams in the SAC Tournament semifinals. Well, this Saturday, Jeremy Donahue and his men's and women's cross-country teams travel to Charlotte, North Carolina to compete in the 2013 NCAA Southeast Region Race. The event will feature teams from various conferences throughout the region and will most likely be LMU's largest race of the year. Earlier this week, the Rail Splitter Athletics reports Adam Haley talked with Donahue about what he expects for his teams in this Saturday's race. For this weekend, we'd like to see a top 10 finish. Realistically looking at it with who we have running, it, it may be tough to get in there. We were 12th last year, so maybe aiming for that repeats performance. And, and I know that doesn't sound exciting, aiming for a spot like that, but you have 25 plus teams there that show up usually at the regional meet. So you know, with this young group, if we could stay in that top half, then we have something to build off of and, and something to stay positive about. So that'll be the goal and for them to run well over the 6K distance, which is a little longer than what they're accustomed to, is the, the other thing we'll look for, is just having that strength to, to be strong over the second half of the race is important to us. Good luck to the LMU cross country teams this Saturday. With that, we'll be back after these messages. I deal with life and death situations. We touch a lot of lives every day. People's lives are in your hands. I will be a nurse. I will be a nurse. The Duncan School of Law at LMU, where innovative teaching meets cutting edge technology. If you love your car or truck, let us help you keep it clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's has unlimited wash plans to fit every budget. Try our $5 express wash or one of our three monthly wash plans. The Wheel Deal, the Soapy J, or the new Blast Wax. With our monthly wash plans, if you pay with credit card, all you do is pay for the present month and your card will be billed on the first of each month. Don't forget, Soapy J's has free vacuums with any wash. Soapy J's Express Car Wash, open seven days a week. Let us help keep your car or truck clean at Soapy J's. Soapy J's on the Cumberland Gap Parkway, Middlesboro. I'd like to remind everybody, this Saturday evening, the Lincoln Memorial University men's basketball team will open the 2013-14 schedule when they play host to the Tigers of Hiawassee College at home in the Tex Turner Arena. Tip-off is at 7 o'clock. We'll have special pregame coverage beginning for that broadcast at 6.30, uh, an exclusive interview with former Lincoln Memorial University head men's basketball coach Hugh Watson about his recent fight with cancer, his current fight with cancer, and of course getting back into the college game as head coach of the Tigers of Hawassi. We'll talk with him in depth about those things. We'll also talk with Josh Schertz in the pregame show about the beginning of the 2013-14 schedule and what he expects as the Rail Splitters will enter the season as the NABC's number 15th ranked National League team. And of course that is a uh, that broadcast will be on uh, the LMU Sports Network this coming uh, Saturday night on MediaStream Channel 4 throughout Claiborne County and of course on the World Wide Web at www.lmurailsplitters.com. That's about all the time we have for tonight. Folks, uh, we need to remind you to keep up to date on everything going on with LMU Athletics. Pull up the LMU Athletics website, www.lmurailsplitters.com. You'll find everything from the latest scores, facts, statistics, player profiles, rosters, schedules, and much more. It's the LMU Athletics website, www.lmurailsplitters.com. Until next week, I'm Rusty Peace. Good night, everybody.